Happy Halloween listener name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know we're all thinking about costumes and candy right now. Right. But uh, yeah. Wall Street decided to throw in a real-life scare yesterday. Definitely. The stock market had a pretty significant drop. Yeah, it wasn't exactly a treat for investors. No kidding. Um, Both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ yeah. had their sharpest drops in over a month. The numbers were startling. Yeah. The Nasdaq plummeted 2.76% to close at 18,095.15. Wow. And the S&P 500 wasn't too far behind, right. dropping 1.86% oh. to finish at 5,705.45. Okay. Even the Dow Jones felt the chill shedding 378 points. Wow. So what on earth happened? What spooked the market so badly? Well, you know, yeah. it was like a perfect storm of different factors. Oh, okay. Um, but one of the biggest was the performance of some of those major tech companies. Right. Like when those big giants stumble, everybody feels it. Yeah, that makes sense. So disappointing quarterly reports from, you know, uh -huh. giants like Microsoft and Meta Platforms. Yeah. That's the parent company of Facebook, of course. Yeah, right. That really shook investor confidence. So let's unpack that a little bit. Sure. What was so concerning about those reports? Well, for Microsoft, yeah. they missed their revenue guidance. And revenue guidance? That's essentially... It's their own forecast okay. for future sales. Gotcha. So when they miss that target, mm -hmm. it suggests a potential slowdown in their growth. Right. And that makes investors nervous. Of course. And their shares actually tumbled 6% on the news. Wow, 6%. Yeah. Ouch. And then Meta... They had kind of a different set of challenges. Okay. They reported like stagnant user growth. Stagnant, so meaning they're not attracting new users? Yeah, not at the rate they used to. Wow. And to add to that, they also warned yeah. that they're going to have to increase capital expenditures significantly in 2025. Capital expenditures, could you just break that down for us a little Yeah, so it's basically investments in things like equipment, buildings, mm -hmm. you know, technology. So they're investing in their future growth. Exactly. Okay. It's necessary for growth and innovation, mm. but it also means mm. spending a lot of money up front. Right. So that warning from Meta about those increased expenditures, yeah. it raised concerns about their future profitability. Makes sense. And investors kind of ran for the exits. Wow. So it's a good reminder that yeah. even with all the hype around AI, right. the market still wants to see those concrete results. Absolutely. And the returns on those investments. Yeah, it's not just about promises anymore, is it? Nope. So it's a reminder that even those tech giants aren't invincible. It's true. But was there anything else contributing to this market downturn besides the tech troubles? Yeah, actually, the release of Thursday's personal consumption expenditures report, you okay. know, the PCE report, uh -huh. that played a role too. And that's a key indicator of infl inflation. Inflation. Okay. And it showed that inflation was moving closer to the Federal Reserve's 2% target. Now, on the surface, that sounds like good news. Right. Inflation cooling down. Yeah, you would think. Yeah. But it also kind of created some uncertainty. Okay. See, this report, it suggests that inflation might be stickier than we thought. Mm -hmm. And that makes the Fed's upcoming interest rate decision on November 7th right. even more crucial. Okay. Investors are kind of on edge, sure. wondering if the Fed will raise rates again. So this PCE report is like a plot twist. It yes. just throws in another <laughs> layer of complexity and uncertainty. Yeah. All right. So we've got the tech sector woes. Mm -hmm. Now we've got this PCE report adding to the drama. It's like a financial thriller unfolding. It really is. Mm -hmm. And then to make things even more interesting, yeah. we have this concept of stagflation looming. Right. Now, yeah. I know stagflation is a combination of economic stagnation and high inflation. Right. But can you explain why that's so worrisome? Well, what's fascinating about stagflation is that it presents a real dilemma oh, for wow. policymakers. Okay. Because, you know, the tools that are traditionally used to combat inflation. Right. Like raising interest rates. Yeah. Can actually worsen economic growth. Oh, so it's like a double-edged sword. Exactly. It's like you're trying to solve two problems at once. Yeah. But the solution for one makes the other one worse. Wow. And, you know, despite the Fed's efforts to control inflation, that those rate hikes we had earlier this year, uh -huh. prices are remaining stubbornly high. Okay. And that puts pressure on businesses, households, right. squeezing budgets, yeah, and potentially hindering economic growth further. So it's kind of like this yep. seesaw stuck in midair. That's a great way to put it. Where both sides are elevated and nobody's happy. Nobody's happy. Yeah. And, you know, this uncertainty is rippling through all sorts of sectors. Yeah, for sure. Not just the stock market. Right. Um, let's shift gears for a second and talk about real estate. 
Okay, listener name. Buckle up. We're about to enter a haunted house of a different kind, the real estate market. Right. What's been going on there? Well, September saw home sales plummet to their lowest levels. Wow. Since 2010. Really? Which is pretty stark compared to, you know, the frenzy we saw just a couple of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. So sales of existing homes dropped 1% compared to August. Okay. With an annualized rate of just 3.84 million units sold. That's a big drop. It is, and to put it in perspective, yeah. year over year, sales have plunged by 3.5%. Wow. It paints a pretty bleak picture, I'd say. Yeah, no kidding. To the housing market. So we've got this backdrop of economic uncertainty, yeah. and now we've got a real estate market that's suddenly gone cold. Yeah. What's that's... driving this? Are these things all connected? They're definitely interconnected, mm-hmm. but there are a few specific factors with real estate that we should probably explore. Let's dive into those details then. Right. What's at the heart of this real estate slowdown? Well, one thing that's really shaking things up uh-huh. is the rise of the cash buyer. Oh, interesting. They are dominating the market right now. Really? They account for a whopping 30% of deals. 30%? Wow. Yeah, that's way higher than the typical 20%. Okay, so what does this mean for someone like you, listener name? If you're thinking about buying a home, what does that mean? Well, it means you're facing tougher competition than ever before. Right. Think about it. Yeah. If you're relying on a mortgage, Mm -hmm. you're going up against buyers who can just make these all-cash offers. So that gives them a huge advantage. Huge. And I imagine that puts first-time home buyers at a particular disadvantage. Absolutely. First-time home buyers, they typically have less cash on hand. Yeah. And they rely more on those mortgages. Right. In September, they represented a record low of 26% of sales. Wow. It's really tough for them to break into the market right now. Yeah. That makes sense. It's a tough situation for sure. Definitely. Yeah. And as if the competition wasn't enough. Right. There's another factor kind of squeezing those potential home buyers. Oh, okay. Rising prices. So even though sales are down, Uh prices are still climbing. It does seem counterintuitive. It does, yeah. But that's the market right now. Wow. So inventory has increased slightly. Okay. That offers a little glimmer of hope. Right. But that median home price yeah. continues to climb. Oh, man. In September, yeah. it hit a chilling $404,500. Wow. That's a 3% increase from last year. So that's 15 months in a row. 15 consecutive months of price increases. So it's kind of a perfect storm for buyers right now. It really is. Fewer homes for sale. Right. More competition from cash buyers. Uh, uh. And prices just keep going up. It's a tough market. Yeah, no kidding. And let's not forget about mortgage rates. Oh, that's right. They did dip slightly below 6.5% in August. Okay. But that hasn't really done much to revive the buyer's market. It's still a pretty big barrier. It is. For a lot of potential buyers. Especially with everything else going on in the economy. Right. That those higher mortgage rates. Exactly. Just mean those monthly payments are going to be higher. Yeah. can be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Especially now. Yeah. So we've got this spooky cocktail of factors. It is a bit spooky. Brewing in the real estate market. Yeah. Is there any hope for things to turn around? Well. Or are we just stuck? Some experts think. Yeah. That there might be some bright spots on the horizon. Okay. Economist Lawrence Yun. Uh Uh-huh. He suggests that those lower mortgage rates, okay. coupled with more listings, right. could actually lead to higher home sales eventually. Okay, so not a guarantee. Not a guarantee. But it's a possibility. Definitely a possibility. So maybe this real estate horror story will have a happy ending after all. I hope so. But before we get too optimistic, yeah, I think it's important to connect this back to you, listener name, oh. and what you're interested in sure. based on those articles you sent. It seems like you're really interested in how AI is impacting the tech sector. Absolutely. That yep. ties right back into what we were talking about with Microsoft and Meta. Yeah, exactly. Remember how we were saying that both companies are investing heavily in AI? Right. But the market's reaction to their reports yeah. shows that investors are starting to wonder mm if those investments will really lead to actual profits. Right. It's not just about the technology itself. It's not. It's about how those companies can actually use it right. to drive growth and innovation uh-huh. and really show results for their investors. In a way that translates to tangible results. Yeah. That's... It's a key takeaway, I'd say. For sure. For anyone who's following the tech sector. Yeah. You know, that hype surrounding AI. Oh, yeah. It's undeniable. Absolutely. But... 
the market is getting more discerning now. Right. They're not just looking for promises. Yeah, they want substance. They want to see how AI is actually being used, uh -huh. you know, integrated into products and services. Yeah. How's it impacting efficiency, productivity? Right. And ultimately, how is it contributing to that bottom line? So the message is don't just get swept away by all the AI hype. Exactly. You got to look beyond the headlines and focus on the fundamentals. Absolutely. How are companies actually using AI to create value? That's the question. Yeah. And that actually applies not just to tech companies, right. but to any business that's okay. using AI, uh -huh. you know, incorporating it. So how are they using it to solve real world problems? Exactly. And drive those business outcomes. Yeah. Okay, that's a good point. It all comes back to the bigger economic picture. We've yeah. talked about the stock market, yeah. real estate, yeah. the challenges of inflation, right. the possibility of stagflation. It's a lot to process. It is. So I want to pause here for a second and just ask you, listener name. Yeah. What are your thoughts on all of this? It's a lot to digest. It is. What's resonating with you the most? You know, I think it's important to remember that these are really complex issues. They are. There are no easy answers. Right. The economy is always changing. Yeah, it's constantly in flux. And there's always a bit of uncertainty. There is. That's true. It's about staying informed, uh -huh. doing your research, Yeah. and just being ready to adapt. Yeah. Being adaptable is so important. It really is. But it's also important not to get overwhelmed by all the doom and gloom. Right. Remember we talked about some potential bright spots, too? We did. Like those lower mortgage rates uh -huh. and that transformative potential of AI. It's about finding that balance yeah, but between more. being aware of the risks uh -huh. and staying optimistic I like that. about the future. So, listener name, Yeah. as you kind of navigate this whole economic landscape. It's like a maze. It is. Remember to, Remember to stay curious. Yes. Stay, stay informed. Informed. And most importantly, stay engaged. Oh, absolutely. Your financial well-being depends on it. It really does. But let's not end on a totally serious note. Okay. It's Halloween. It is. Speaking of treats. Yeah. I think it's time to uncover a few potential treats right. that are hidden in this kind of spooky economic landscape. I like that. A little treat to balance out the tricks. The tricks we've been talking about, yeah. Exactly. So where should we start our treasure hunt? Yeah, it's been quite a journey. It has. Exploring all the twists and turns. For sure. Of this crazy economic landscape. Yeah. Uncovered some spooky stuff. Definitely spooky. But we also found some, you know, yeah. hidden treasures along the way. Yeah, the opportunities. Resilience. Yeah. I got to say, I'm feeling more treat than trick. Me too, me too. After all this. I think that's the right way to look at it. Yeah. Even amidst all the uncertainty yeah. and volatility. Right. There's always a reason for optimism. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the economy is a living thing. It is. It's constantly changing. It's dynamic. Dynamic. Yeah. And, you know, we've seen it throughout history. We have. Even in the face of those really big challenges. It's true. Humans are adaptable. We are. We find a way. We find a way. Yeah. That's why I think, you know, while it's good to be aware of the risks. Right. And, you know, right prepare for the potential downturns. Yeah, absolutely. It's equally important to stay optimistic. Yeah, to keep that long-term vision. Long-term vision, exactly. So what would you say are like the key takeaways for our listeners today? Okay, let's think about that. What should they be thinking about? Yeah, what should they be thinking about? As they're navigating this crazy economic world. Well, I think first and foremost, mm -hmm. it's stay informed. Right, stay informed. Pay attention to the news. Yeah. Read articles. Listen to podcasts. Like this one. Like this one, of course. Right. And just do your research. Knowledge is power. It really is. Right. The more you understand yeah. about how the economy works, uh -huh. the better decisions you can make. Right. So that brings us to decisions. Decisions, yes. That's a good segue into your second takeaway. Okay. So the second takeaway, yeah. I would say, is be strategic. Okay. Intentional with your financial choices. Yeah, absolutely. So whether you're investing, right. saving, uh -huh. spending, right. take your time. Yeah, think it through. Think it through. Definitely your options. Weigh the risks and rewards. Exactly. And make those choices uh -huh. that help you reach your goals. Your long-term goals. Long-term, yeah. Don't get swept up. Don't get swept up. In all the hype. All the hype, yeah. Don't just react. Have a plan. Right, stick to the plan. Stick to it. But be flexible. Be ready to adjust. Exactly. When you need to. Okay, that's good advice. And then my third takeaway would be don't be afraid. Okay. To ask for help. Yeah. To seek advice. Right. 
You know, financial planning can be confusing. It can be. It's complex. And there are so many experts out there yeah. who can help you. Yeah, guide you. Guide you. It's like having a, a guide in the economic wilderness. A guide. I love that. Yeah. It's a great analogy. Yeah. It can help you assess your risk tolerance. Right. Develop your own investment strategy. Yeah. Personalized for you. Personalized. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and answer any questions you might have. That's what they're there for. Yeah. And finally, I would just encourage everyone to remember the power of perspective. Oh, that's so important. You know, the economy is cyclical. Yeah. There will always be ups and downs. Ups and downs, yeah. It's like riding a roller coaster. It really is. There are those highs and lows. But you got to enjoy the ride. You do, yeah. The ride eventually ends. It does. That's a good point. That's why it's so important yeah. to take that long term perspective. Don't get caught up. Yeah, don't panic. In all the short-term stuff. Exactly. Focus on building that solid foundation. That solid foundation. Making smart investments. Yes. And just staying the course. Staying the course, yeah. I like that. It's good advice. Okay, well said. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. I just want to leave everyone with one final thought. It's okay. Don't underestimate your own power. That's right. Your choices, your actions, yeah. your beliefs. They all contribute. They all contribute. To shaping the world around us. To shaping the economic landscape. The economic landscape, absolutely. It's a reminder that we're not just passive bystanders. We're not, no. We have a role to play. We do. In creating that, you know, yeah. vibrant, resilient, yeah. equitable economy. So everyone. For everyone, yeah. So, listener name. As you continue on your journey. Yeah. Through this economic landscape. You remember. You have more power than you realize. Stay informed. Be strategic. Seek guidance. And most importantly, never lose sight of the bigger picture. The bigger picture, beautifully said. Well, we've reached the end of our deep dive. I think so. I hope this exploration has yeah. been insightful. I think it has. Empowering. Empowering, yeah. So just remember, yeah. the future isn't set in stone. The future is ours to create. It's shaped by our choices and our actions. Then go out there. Make informed decisions. Embrace that power. That power that you have. And help create a brighter future. A brighter future. For yourself and for all of us. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.